So this is the Insta360 GO 3S and in today's video I'm going to showcase how great this tiny little 4K camera performs and I bought this with the standard bundle in Midnight Black 64GB edition. So let's go ahead and dive straight into it. So as part of the standard bundle, you get a few mounts here, you got a paperwork and you have the camera, the magnetic pendant, the pivot stand and the easy clip and also a sticky pad mount as well. So I'm going to just dive in a little bit more about the camera itself. Now this is detachable so I'm just going to pull this out by pressing the little lock switch on the side. This on its own is a very versatile portable lightweight 4K camera with an ultra wide field of view. And I'm showing the specs on the screen now with this just to save a little bit of time. But in fact, you can go ahead and start recording by just pressing the little button on the left hand side of the lens right there. And it will start the recording and you can stop the recording as well. This also has voice commands in there so you can tell it to take a video, take a photo, etc. And if you wanted to rotate the orientation, then you have to stop the recording and you have to tilt it this way to do portrait videos or take portrait photos and then start recording again. But what you can't do with it is switch it directly from horizontal to portrait and have the recording continue. It will always need to require you to stop the recording and change the orientation after you start the recording again. Having said that, it's a very strong magnetic attachment to various different mounts and I'm gonna be testing out sample shots with all of these mounts that come in the standard bundle. Now the action pod is actually very great. It has this 2.2 inch screen at the back as well. You got some buttons just on the right hand side, the power button and then the mode button. Then you got the shutter button along the top. The screen flips out and then you can use that to see yourself when you are doing the filming. This gives you 140 minutes of battery life with the actual camera itself. This gives you around 35 minutes with a standalone battery. Having said that, I have tested this out for a couple of days and I would say the battery lasts more around the 25 minute mark. So depending on how much you constantly use it, what types of mode you use, if you shoot at 4K, then you may get a little bit less battery than stated. So you just need to make sure that whatever filming you want to get with this, make sure it's fully charged so you can get everything within that half an hour mark. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu options on the screen. So I won't go into depth with this, I'm just gonna show you the basics. So you can see here, you've got your resolutions, frames per second. If you tap that, you can actually switch the mode. This is also the same if you press the mode button just on the right hand side. On the left hand side, you have the tilt fix. So when you are doing your filming, then you can make sure to set this on. If you feel like you're a little bit unlevel and you just want to get it accurate when you are filming, you can just set that to on. Then you have the different types of fields of view. So D-Warp just makes everything look normal like a standard camera. It doesn't give you any curving or distortion around the edges or the sides. If you go across, you can set this to action, mega, ultra wide, D-Warp and narrow. For me, I'm going to do a lot of my filming using ultra wide, so I will leave it set to that. You also have your zoom level, 1x and 2x. If you swipe down from the top, this is your control center with shortcuts to various different parts of the settings and the camera controls. If you swipe from the left to the right, this is where you can set some of the video settings or whichever mode you're on. If you swipe upwards, this is where you can set the resolution and frame rates. Now stabilization, I'm leaving this on max because I've found that this gives me the most absolute smoothest and stable footage when I'm doing my filming. I believe it came with standard when I pull it out of the box and when I was using the magnetic pendant underneath my shirt, it was a little bit shaky. As soon as I changed it to max, it just made my videos so much smoother and every sample shot that you're going to see in this video will be set to max. So we'll get rid of that. If you swipe from the right, this is where you can see all of the shots you've taken. And these are some of the shots that I'm gonna showcase of how they look in various different unique ways that I've tried to gather some sample shots using all of these mounts. Then you've got information about the battery life of the action pod and the action camera on the top right. And then on the top left, you have the amount of recording time left with the internal storage. Now this is the 64 gigabyte version, but you can obviously go up to the 128 gigabyte version if that's what you prefer. And finally, the last thing I just wanted to showcase is if you do pair this with the Insta360 app, then you can also get a live view and you can start recording and shooting all of your photos and videos directly from here. So I've connected it. It's connected very quickly via Bluetooth and you can see this is the live view here. So I can turn that around. You can see in real time how responsive that is. 
I can go ahead and start the recording from here. But you also have various different options that you can set, much like the actual screen on the action pod itself. You can set them directly from here as well. So I've got the stabilization as max and I've got the field of view as ultra wide. You can also switch over to free frame video. You can do a time lapse, a time shift, slow motion and loop recording as well. So that's plenty of options that you can play around with. And I'm also going to take a couple of photos. I'm also going to take a couple of HDR photos as well, just to show you how they look and how vibrant the pictures are if you do want to use this as a photography camera. So there's plenty of things you can do on the app and I'm going to be using the app to actually start the recording as well, which I think is a little bit more convenient, especially when I'm using just the camera without the action pod. But one thing I also want to mention that I've also gone ahead and purchased a custom skin for the camera for seven pounds, which I think is actually a great price. So you can actually upload your own image and have that sent in a pack like this. And there you go attached my custom skin. I had to just unscrew the top part of this lens and then you place this on, screw the lens back on and there it is. Now the image, I think the color quality on this is not as clear as the actual high quality image I uploaded. So it's a little bit washed out. I don't think it has a very good color matching accuracy, but nonetheless for seven pounds, you can't really go wrong. And I would say it's more of like a protection rather than having more of a vibrant skin, but they offer a lot of presets, which I presume is going to be a lot higher quality when you do order one of those instead of uploading your own. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at some sample shots that I've taken with this using all of these mounts in various different ways. And I'll showcase how I've used them. And hopefully you find the footage as good as I did using the flow state stabilization technology built into the Go 3S. And then I will give you my final thoughts straight after. Okay, so if you're going to be using this as a vlogging camera, then I wanted to test out the audio quality. So it is actually quite windy today. And if you can still hear me quite clearly, then this is how the audio will come out if you use this for giving speeches or just talking on your video. And if there's a lot of cars in the background on the roads next to you, or there's a lot of people, then check out to see if this does a good job with the noise cancellation or you still hear a lot of background audio. So I've got this in the action pod and I'm just holding it in my hand. So you can also test out to see how steady it is, how great it looks, and everything I'm gonna be showcasing is in 4K, 30 frames per second. So let me know down in the comments below of what you think of the audio quality.
So hopefully you found those shots very useful and insightful in terms of knowing how smooth this actually is, especially when you set it to max stabilization. There's so much things you can do with this. I really like the design of this. If I was going to talk about some of the drawbacks, then I would say for one, when you use just this small camera on its own as standalone, so many times I've accidentally pressed the button on this and it's just started recording and then I have to stop it. It just stores all those accidental shots in your gallery you have to go in there and delete it so it's quite sensitive so especially when you're looking to reposition it put it onto a mount you can very easily just press this by accident and it will start recording and there's nothing you can do because that is part of the design where it's a one quick tap to start recording not just that when i actually use this with the pivot stand i've noticed that it doesn't exactly fit perfectly onto the magnetic clips onto the stand here let me just show you what i mean so you can see there's some clips on both sides of the pivot stand right here. This is a very strong magnetic back. And if you look at the camera itself, you can see there's some slots here where those metal clips actually have to go into on both sides. Now, I'm not sure if this is by design, but if I lock one of these into place, what happens is one of them is fully locked, the other one is not. And no matter how much I try, I can't get the second one to be locked in. So I have to rely on just one clip and the magnetic strength to basically hold this into place. I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be the case, but everything is aligned and no matter how much I force this, it just doesn't go in. And you can see just there on the right, that's locked in. The metallic clip on the left is not locked in. And even if I try and force it to, it doesn't work. And I will say probably the last drawback, which may not be an issue for most people, and I've seen users basically saying this online when they've been reviewing this product is that the go 3s doesn't have horizon lock stabilization inbuilt into this the go 2 and the go 3 they do have that so they remove that functionality from this but if that's something that you used to use maybe a lot of you the majority of you don't even know what that is or probably don't even use it then it's not an issue whatsoever. For me, it's not an issue. I know that for sure. Everything else that I can record from this is does every single thing for my purpose. But that's just something to be aware of. And if you want more information about that, then just make sure you drop a comment below and I can explain that in more detail. Apart from that, this is absolutely great. I'm very happy with this. I'm gonna use this on my trips when I go on holiday. Maybe get some really cool shots when I'm driving and reviewing some things outdoors as well that require me to just have those unique positions. Especially great for B-roll footage as well. And I'm going to be testing a lot more of this, especially in low lighting conditions in the future as well. So make sure to subscribe and make sure to check out my socials so you don't miss any of those sample clips that I'll be taking with this in the near future. As always, if you like this video, make sure to drop a like, make sure to subscribe. Any comments, drop them down below and I will see you all at the next one. Take care.